What's good, YouTube birds and YouTube bets? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Once again, the bow and arrows are being thrown toward unified welterweight champion L. Smith Jr. You have, once again, a former fighter, boxing analyst, guzzling down some hater raid in regards to Earl Spence Jr. Let me set the stage for you. <laughs> I just got through watching Max on Boxing, hosted by Max Kellerman. Max Kellerman, he been with ESPN for a minute now. I remember he used to host uh, Friday Night Fights with that co-host. I can't remember the guy that was hosting the show and uh, Max Kellerman was the analyst of that show. They used to have some good fights on there. You remember the Mickey Ward versus Emmanuel Augustus fight? That was a fight of the year. That fight took place on Friday Night ESPN Boxing. Great fight. And a lot of other great matchups. Really, um, the resurrection of, of Mickey Ward that took place on Friday Night Boxing. That got him that big fight with Arturo Gatti. They end up having a trilogy. That's one of the greatest trilogies when you're talking about action fights. You're talking about fan-friendly fights. You got to put Arturo Gatti versus Mickey Ward up there with the great, great, great trilogies in boxing. With all that being said, man, he had a guest on there by the name of Timothy Bradley, former Multi division world champion. He had titles in the junior welterweight and welterweight division. Tim Bradley fixed his mouth to say that Errol Smith Jr. is running from Terrence Crawford. Now, he'll have an audience for those comments. He'll get a round of applause for those comments. He'll get a standing ovation for those comments. But those comments are premature, to say the least. Right? You could say it's an all right lie that he would say something like that. Because Errol Spence Jr. said this. I don't know if people keep forgetting this or don't want to hear it or just, you know, don't want to wait. You know, you look at what Tim Smith said. Vice President of the PBC. He said the money that both fighters are going to command for this fight makes this fight impossible at this moment in time to make. Both guys will have to accept less than what they feel they're worth for this fight to happen. For this fight to happen, let me just set the stage for this as far as this. I'm going to break this video down. But For this fight to actually happen, I think both guys probably have to take something like, say uh, it'll, it'll have to take like a $5 million guarantee Terrence Crawford would have to take something like a four million dollar guarantee Spence would have to get 60% of the pay-per-view and Crawford would have to get 40% of the pay-per-view and if the pay-per-view does say 500,000 which I think is a max for this fight you know due to the streaming services you're not going to see too many fights crack a million anymore Unless you're talking about Floyd Mayweather Jr. coming back, fighting some YouTuber or something like that. You know, I, uh, maybe Canelo. I don't even think uh, Canelo did what, 800000 with Kayla Plant? If he fight Jamal Charlo. Will that fight do a million? I don't think it do a million. It might do about 850, 900, somewhere in that range. But I did a video the other day, told you that Canelo is going to be fighting Allison Silva. I don't think that fight does a million. That fight does some somewhere in the similar numbers to uh, Kayla Plant. You know, I see that fight maybe doing around 800,000. It might do something like what Jamal Charlo doing, 850, 900,000. That'll be the, the ceiling for a fight like that. So you ain't gonna see gone of the days, long gone of the days of a million dollar pay-per-views is basically what I'm saying. With all that being said, Timothy Bradley, AKA Desert Storm fixed his mouth and fed into the propaganda of these Terrence Bud Crawford fanboys and said that Spence is running from Crawford. 
And I'm here to tell you right now, there could be nothing further from the truth. Spence told you guys point blank period that he was going to clean up his side of the street and before he leaves 147 that he will fight Crawford. Didn't he not say that? Now has he gone back on that hell to the now? He's finna fight your Danis Ugas in April. From what I'm hearing, it's gonna be either April 16th or April 23rd. That's the two dates that I'm hearing that's gonna be possible. Dates for Spence Ugas. Now once he's through with that fight, he's come out victorious and that's not assumed that it's gonna be automatic. People just assuming that, okay, he's gonna beat Ugas and let's look forward to Spence versus Crawford. Ugas is a live dog in this fight, ladies and gentlemen. And when this fight, formally gets announced in the lead up to this fight the week before this fight i'll break that fight down in detail but i'm here to tell you right now that's not a gimme fight by no stretch of imagination people kind of looking past Ugas. Ugas just got to be beating pacquiao Ugas got the kind of style that's gonna always have him competitive in a fight he ain't gonna just get boat racing in any fight he ain't gonna get smashed in any fight he ain't gonna get mikey garcia in this fight i don't know if y'all believe that's gonna happen or y'all thinking that's gonna be the case he not going to get Mikey Garcia in this fight. He not going to get Lamar Peterson, Lamont Peterson in this fight. That's not going to happen. Okay? Even when he fought Sean Porter, a lot of people thought he'd be Porter. I thought Porter edged it out. I thought Ugas should have let his hands go a little bit more. It made it a little bit more clear on his side. And he probably could have got the decision. But due to the fact that Porter had become a champion by beating Danny Garcia, he's one of the bigger names under the PBC. And everybody know that it, it was trying to set the stage for a Porter Spence fight. With all that being said, Timothy Bradley, aka Uncle Tim, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way, because he seems to be that uncle that always giving fighters advice. He basically said that Spence is ducking Crawford. That he's not sure that. Spence's eyes gonna hold up. He says it's more mental than physical. He says when you're in the ring, you're facing a guy like a Ugas who's a counter puncher, deadly a counter puncher at that. That when you are uh, throwing your punches and you anticipating that he's gonna try to counter what you're doing, that uh the eye injury could play a part. Could have make him more hesitant to let his hands go and could play a part because he says your mind tells your eyes what it sees. And if your eyes is not if you're not confident in what you're seeing, it might make you hesitant to, uh, you know, anticipate. Because, you know, it's, just, it's, it's a chess move in that square circle. You know, you're setting things up. You're throwing a jab. You're saying, okay, I'm going to throw this. And you're trying to see how your opponent going to react to what you're doing. You're going to say, okay, I'm going to counter what he's doing in the next round. This, that, and the third. You know, you got guys like uh, Terrence Crawford, who has the highest boxing IQ in the sport of boxing. He's uh he's one of the best at doing those type of things. And when you get in there with him, man, you got to be on top of your game in all aspects or you will get exploited. And uh, that's what Timothy Bradley is saying, man. He's saying that he believes that uh, Ugas' style is similar to Danny Garcia's style. And we see that uh, Spence had no problem with that style. Uh, he also compared Ugas' style to, uh, who else? He had another fighter that he had in mind. And he said uh, Errol didn't have no problem with that type of style, that counter-punching style. He said he compared it to Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is a counter-puncher. But the thing about it is, Ugas is much bigger than Mikey Garcia. He's much longer than Mikey Garcia. He's got some long arms. I don't know what his reach is, but from what I noticed when I watched him in the ring, is he's got some long arms, and he's a guy that's he can punch when you punch. So that's not going to be a easy day at the office for uh, Errol Spence Jr. I'm here to tell you that. With all that being said, Timothy Bradley, I don't know if he forgot this or don't want to believe it, but I know you heard just like everybody who follows boxing closely heard Errol Spence Jr. say that once he cleans up his side of the street, that he will not leave the welterweight division without undisputed. He wants to be undisputed at 147. For that to happen, he must defeat Crawford. Now, if he defeats Ukas, 
and he doesn't fight Crawford next, then I got to bow down. Bow down to a player that's greater than you. That's West Side. But yeah, I'll have to bow down to all you Terrence Crawford fans and have to admit that, okay, well, he ain't taking the fight. And I don't care whatever the reason is. It might be a valid reason. Like Tim Smith said, it might not be enough money in that fight to pacify both fighters' purse demands. That might be a, a good argument, but I don't want to hear that because Errol, who last time I checked said he is he's his own boss, he don't he don't listen to uh, nobody say. He don't have a boss. He don't have nobody telling him what moves to make. He has an advisor. He has a manager, but he is the ultimate decision maker, and he ultimately makes that final call. So if that's the case, I want to see an example like the example I saw when Canelo Alvarez overruled Oscar De La Hoya and fought Israel on the Lara anyway against what they wanted. I want to see the example of Deontay Wilder who overruled the PBC led by Al Heyman and fought Luis Ortiz when they advised him not to take that fight. So I want to see Earl Spence Jr. do the same thing. And if Earl Spence Jr. want that fight bad enough, he'll go to the PBC and say, okay, he'll, he got, first of all, he got to get on the phone with Crawford and talk to Crawford and say, look here, Crawford, we're going to have to take a lesser guarantee than what we think we should get to make this fight happen. This is for your legacy and for my legacy. I'm going to take a $5 million guarantee minimum. You take a $4 million guarantee minimum. I'm going to get 60% of the pay-per-view split and you get 40% of the pay-per-view split. Get on the phone with him. You got to call Tyrone. Call him. That means you're going to have to call Terrence. Call him. Yeah, you got to get on the phone with uh, Terrence Crawford and call him. Just like Deontay Wilder got on the phone and talked with Anthony Joshua and told him, say, I got $50 million in escrow that I'm going to send directly to your account. We're going to go 50-50 on the pay-per-view. Let's make it happen. But Anthony Joshua, who has a slave contract, and I've been telling you guys this for a minute now, and I don't mean that he's actually a slave and he's in shackles in the chain. I'm not saying like that. I'm saying that he has no say-so on who or where or when he fights. That's why you never hear AJ call out no fighter because he know he really don't have no, no jurisdiction as far as who he fights. That goes to Eddie Hearn and his daddy, Papa Hearn, a.k.a. Barry Hearn. <laughs> so we will see what happens. We will see what transpires. That's going to have to be uh, the situation for that fight to uh, actually happen. Now, if he gets on the phone and tells Terrence Bud Crawford what the real is, and Terrence Crawford says, hell no, nah, I can't take no $4 million guarantee. I made $6 million <laughs> fighting Sean Porter. He ain't have no belt. I made $4.8 million fighting Amir Khan. And Amir Khan ain't on the level of a fight that you and me are. So I got to get at least 10 You know, that's what I was going to get in the Pacquiao fight. I got to get at least 10 And if that's the case, then... Earl Smith Jr. will have to make a decision at that point to either move up to 154 or maybe stay there and fight Keith one time Thurman and then move up and fight at 154. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But uh, <laughs> it's crazy what Timothy Bradley was saying, man. He know Earl Smith Jr. said that he's going to fight Crawford after he unify with Ugas. He's going to clean up his side of the streets. The fight is much easier to make. Ugas ain't going to command what Crawford going to command. But Crawford's going to definitely have to lower what he expects to make. Now, Crawford hasn't come out publicly saying what kind of uh, purse he wants, but he has come out and said he wants 50-50. And if he's steadfast on that 50-50, then the fight's not going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. And y'all need to quit saying that Spence is ducking and, you know, Spence is running, ducking and running for cover. Y'all need to quit saying that because that's not the case, man. He still has got business to take care of on his side of the street. He is doing the heavy lifting. He is fighting the better opposition at 147. Crawford, who's finally free of the contract with Bob Arum, is basically in a holding pattern. I don't know who he's going to fight next. He's suing Bob Arum, so that kind of takes the Josh Taylor fight out, out of the equation. You know. I don't, another thing, I'm, I'm, let me break this, bring this up. All these YouTube channels trying to throw Jerron Boots in this on Terrence Crawford. Now. Nah. Jerron Boots has got to get a better win than uh, Sergey Lipinets. And he took a step back in his next fight with uh, Thomas Delorme, who wasn't even on the level of a Sergey Lipinets, in my opinion. He, he got to, uh, you know, fight that guy Crawley and become the mandatory at the IBL. Uh, if you want to be in the WBO and you want Crawford, uh, you need to get in there with uh, 
you know, Virgil Ortiz is, is, is higher than you in the rankings. So I don't know what the next highest guy, Virgil got a fight coming up. With the next highest guy up under Virgil Ortiz, you need to be trying to set a fight up with them and get yourself in position to fight Terrence Crawford. Because he's in a kind of messed up situation too, kind of like Crawford, man. He's going to have a hard time finding opponents, man. He's just that good. He's a great fighter. His defense needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And I, I kind of wonder if he's in a high-level fight going into the second half of the fight, how, how will he perform? Will he be just as effective? in the second half of a high-level fight as he is in the first half of a fight, fighting these guys that he's been fighting, these lower-till guys that he's been fighting. That remains to be seen. I kind of had the same uh, question about Jermaine Taylor, and I kind of got that answer when he fought uh, Bernard Hopkins, as he looked good early on in that fight. I'm talking about the first fight. But in the second half of that fight, he kind of faded out, you know, because that fight was fought at a high level. Bernard Hopkins, who's one of the most patient fighters in boxing, was able to break him down in the second half of that fight, and he almost stopped Jermaine Taylor. I wonder if that could be how the fight kind of play out similarly if he fought Crawford now. Early on, he'd be doing good against Crawford. He's got electric uh, hand speed. He's an electric offensive fighter. I think he'll uh, maybe give Crawford a problem. Crawford would be a little bit patient, not taking too many ch chances, and get him into the second half of that fight and basically do what a lot of fighters do when they got a young line in there that ain't never been on that level before. You know, take him out to the deep water and drown him. And I think that would be the case if they fought actually right now. I think uh, in the second half of that fight, Crawford would take over start landing big shots and have a chance to maybe stop uh, <laughs> Jerron Boos Ennis late in that fight. Now, Jerron Boos Ennis' chin might be suspect. It might be good. I, you know, I don't know. He ain't been in there with a puncher like Crawford. He might be able to hold up, and it will make it for a very close decision win. Will you go by the dominance of a fight in the first half of that fight, or you go by what's going on in the second half of the fight when the veteran, more experienced fighter is kind of taking the young line to school? So that, that I, I see that fight playing out similarly to the Hopkins- Jermaine Taylor first fight in that regard so we will see what happens and we will see what transpires but Timothy Bradley is out here with his pom-poms <coughs> excuse me and cheerleading and uh, co-signing what a lot of these Terrence Bud Crawford fans are saying saying that Smith is ducking and running and won't no part of Terrence Crawford and I'm here to tell you right now that ain't nothing but BS ain't nothing but a crock of shit L. Spence Jr. still has business to take care of. Let him clean up his side of the street. And after Ugas, after the Ugas fight, if he's victorious, if he doesn't try to make the fight happen, do his best to try to make the fight happen. And if Crawford don't accept the demands, that's the only way I can give him out on this. But if he tries to not even entertain the fight, not even try to do his due diligence to try to make the fight happen, then I would have to bow down to all the Terrence Bill Crawford fans and co-sign what they've been saying all along that Spence don't want to fight. But as of now, I can't co-sign that because he still is upholding to what he's been saying for well over a year now. That he wants to unify, clean up his side of the street with the PBC welterweights. And then before he leaves 147, he will indeed take on Terrence Bird Crawford for Undisputed. Now, a lot of people say this is the biggest fight in boxing. It probably is the best fight in boxing can be made by pound for pound fighters <clears throat> but it's not the biggest fight in boxing as far as monetarily wise because uh i'm here to tell you right now canelo charlo makes more money than spence versus crawford I'll tell you that right now not to say it's a better fight because i don't rate charlo as high as i rate spence and i don't you know and i rate crawford over canelo i got crawford one and canelo two but charlo is He's a he's a pound for pound fight. I got him in the, I got him actually in my top ten. I got him toward the end of the ten. Eight, nine, ten, somewhere in that range. I don't have him as high as I got Arrow at three and uh, Crawford at one. So it's, it's it's in that regard, it's a bigger it's a bigger fight because it's uh involving two pound for pound fighters. But as far as what the fight would earn, what the fight would gross, I believe that Canelo Charlo actually makes more money. You can put ninety thousand in Cowboy Stadium. And then it would do high pay per view numbers. You're looking at eight fifty to nine hundred thousand pay per view buys for Canelo Charlo. You're looking at, in my opinion, five hundred thousand ceiling for Spence versus Crawford. Let me know your thoughts about what Tim Bradley said, aka Uncle Tim. I don't say that in a derogatory way, you know, because he's always out here doing these interviews, giving fighters advice, and telling fighters what he feels they should do and the moves that they should make in the sport of boxing. <laughs> kind of like giving that advice that an uncle gives his uh, nephew. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. Let me know your thoughts about uh, 
Timothy Bradley saying uh, Spence is ducking. Let me know your thoughts about Timothy Bradley saying that Spence is going to beat Uga because that style is similar to the Danny Garcia style and the Mikey Garcia style that he has already conquered in those two opponents. Let me know your thoughts about Bradley saying that Spence is going to be hesitant with that eye injury because he's, he's had problems not only with that eye injury, but with that horrific car accident. But he specified the eye injury that could play a major part in the Ugas fight. That Ugas is talented enough to exploit that if he's mentally uh, challenged with the eye injury. Again, with the mental going to the physical. Saying that his mind is going to tell him, tell him what his eyes see. And if his eyes is not, he's, if he's not as confident in his vision, that it could make him hesitant. And it could make him uh, make mistakes. Dealing with a precise counter puncher in your Danis Ugas. Let me know your thoughts and hit the like button if you like the content of this video. Like, share this YouTube channel called JB Sports and subscribe to it. The man, the myth, the legend. And I holler.